Wondering what deferred revenue is? The short answer is that you only record the revenue when it's been earned, not when the payment hits the bank. That's cash-based accounting. But it can be tricky to wrap your head around how it works and why it's necessary. In this video, we'll talk you through the ins and outs of deferred revenue, including how the process works and how to enter it into your ledger. Deferred revenue is money that you receive for a future product or service. When you receive the payment, you add it to the balance sheet. The payment stays here until you deliver the product or service. Then it moves to your income statement as actual revenue. Let's say you offer an annual subscription for a monthly magazine you're running. The customer pays for the year in advance. This is deferred revenue. When the final edition is delivered, their annual payment moves to your income statement and becomes revenue. In some industries and circles, deferred revenue is also called called unearned revenue or prepaid revenue. How does deferred revenue work? Grab a spatula, we're taking a cooking class. Robbie is the head chef and owner of an Italian restaurant. On top of cooking and serving delicious food, he also runs cooking classes. To book a cooking class with Robbie, a customer signs up and pays $100 for the session. The money immediately hits Robbie's bank account, but the cooking class does not take place until next month. So how does Robbie record this money? He records it as deferred revenue. Because the cooking class hasn't happened yet, Robbie can't add the money into his income statement. He's using accrual accounting, which means he only recognizes revenue when it's earned. So he adds the payment to his balance sheet. That way it stays away from the income statement, but he's still tracking it. Here's what that will look like. On this balance sheet, Robbie records the $100 of cash from the payment. It sits in the debit column as the money is in the bank account. He also records the $100 of unearned revenue as credit. The next month rolls around and Robbie delivers his cooking class. Now we can move his deferred revenue into his income statement. It will look something like this. So how does deferred revenue work if you're splitting payments over different accounting periods? Let's say a customer pays $400 to have four cooking classes with Robbie. Two will take place next month and the other two will take place the following month. Payments for these classes are deferred revenue. So Robbie adds them to his balance sheet. But two of the cooking classes take place in a different account period. What happens when half of the classes are complete, but the other half aren't? In this situation, Robbie moves half of the payments from his balance sheet to his income statement after the first two classes. Balance sheet will look like this. While his income statement will look like this. After the final two classes, Robbie can move the remaining deferred revenue to his income statement. Why is deferred revenue classed as a liability? Having cash in your hand can never be a liability, right? Not quite. The cash in your bank account hasn't been earned. It simply represents an obligation to fulfill the order in the future. You've received the money, but you still haven't delivered the product or service. There is also the risk of cancellation. If the customer backs out, you have to refund them, unless you have a contract that states otherwise. How to use deferred revenue for business success. Although you can't declare deferred revenue on your income statement, you can still spend it. As long as you're able to deliver your customers' order, you can use the funds to finance other elements of your business. Think of it as financing from your customers. Instead of relying on other assets or a loan from the bank, you can use their funds to improve your business. Let's use the cooking class example to demonstrate how it works. Put yourself in Robbie's shoes again. 20 customers order a cooking class for next month. Total cost is $2,000. You're confident that you can deliver the classes as planned, so you use $2,000 to buy new equipment. You order aprons, ingredients, and new utensils. Using the deferred revenue cash, you provide your customers with better equipment. This improves their overall experience, which benefits your business. For example, these customers are more likely to leave a good review online or recommend you to their friends and family. But remember, you should only spend deferred revenue if you can still deliver the product or sell. Service. If there's any doubt that spending the money will impact delivery, don't do it. To accurately evaluate your finances with deferred revenue, you create an accurate representation of your financial position. You're matching your income to when you earned it, which means you can better understand your profitability within an accounting period. For example, let's say you receive
receive payments for a cooking class, but you're not running it until three months from now. This means that your profits are reflected in your income statement three months later, not today. As a result, you can efficiently manage your money. By adding deferred revenue to your balance sheet, you can also avoid declaring unearned income. This gives you a clear picture of current revenue and gives an accurate representation of your company's worth. To track your deferred revenue and manage your income, consider using Chargebee. Our subscription management platform helps you manage your finances and streamline your operations from a central location. Plus, you can automate revenue recognition so you can spend less time in manual finance systems, which are prone to human error, and more time to growing your business. Click the link in this video to sign up for a demo and see how it works. Thanks for watching this video about deferred revenue. We hope you found it useful. Subscribe to our channel for more educational videos for SaaS and subscription businesses. We'll see you in the next one.